Ghost towns are a dime a dozen in America. Places that were once bustling with life are now dead and abandoned. The reasons why these towns died are varied, though most of them were simply due to a poor economy. Some towns were bypassed by a highway or a railroad, which meant fewer visitors and less business. Others disappeared because the natural resources in the area had been exhausted. Old mining towns are a good example. Some towns were abandoned due to natural disasters, others due to wars or political issues. But there are a rare few that became deserted for reasons of a more horrific nature. Such is the case of a small remote village in Alaska located on the southern tip of the Kenai Peninsula. The town was once a vibrant, thriving community called Portlock. Today, only rotting houses and buildings remain. Since it was abandoned more than 70 years ago, no one has ever attempted to make Portlock their home again. What horrific reason could have caused all of the residents of Portlock to move out and settle in nearby villages? According to local history, a hairy creature once tormented the villagers, stalking and killing some of them, forcing the rest to flee. They called the monster Nantinok. Most of us know him as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. But did an aggressive Bigfoot really chase people out of Portlock? Join us as we investigate the legend of the Portlock monster and find out what most likely happened in this small rural town. Portlock is located on the southwest edge of the Kenai Peninsula on Port Chatham Bay near Kodiak Island, just 200 kilometers south of Anchorage. The area was originally inhabited by the Aleutic people. It had been this way for thousands of years. Around 1786, a ship of the British Royal Navy headed by Captain Nathaniel Portlock passed through the area. While he admired the scenery, the crew didn't stay in the area. However, the locals did end up naming the village after him. At that time, the community was quite small with only a handful of residents. Most of them were of Russian and Alaskan native descent. It was only around the turn of the 20th century when the village started to truly prosper. It became a thriving community when an American company decided to establish an entire fleet of commercial fishing boats in the area due to the bountiful fishing. The company also established the Portlock Cannery. Aside from the villagers, seasonal workers would stay in the village to help with the cannery's operations. By 1921, Portlock had grown enough to warrant the establishment of a post office. Many saw the village as a beautiful and peaceful place to live in. But behind that peaceful and happy facade, there were rumors about mysterious deaths and unexplained disappearances in and around the village. The first of the strange events in Portlock is believed to have happened in 1905. A large, unidentified animal was harassing the village. It was disturbing the workers' camps at night. Because of this, it was said that all the seasonal workers left. When they came back the next season, the disturbances happened again. Over the next few decades, the area reportedly had an abnormally high number of disappearances and deaths. There were terrifying tales of men who went hunting in the hills for sheep and bear, only to disappear, never to be heard from again, until dismembered bodies start showing up in the lagoon. It is said that the bodies were torn up in a way that could not have possibly been done by a bear. Another tale told by the villagers talked about a group of men hunting a moose. They came upon an area that showed signs of a struggle. The grass had been matted down and there were deep tracks on the soft ground. However, these tracks were deep and seemed to have come from an animal that walked like a man. They were over 18 inches long, heading towards the mountains. There was no sign of the moose. In 1920, a man named Albert Petka, who lived near Nulato, Alaska, was attacked by a Sasquatch-like creature. Though his dogs were able to drive off the creature eventually, Petka's injuries were fatal. However, he was still able to share details about the attack before dying. 
In the 1930s, a local logger named Andrew Kamilk was working when he was hit on the head by a piece of logging equipment. The equipment was huge and heavy. It was not possible for one man to lift it, let alone use it to strike someone with force. In addition, they found Kamuk's body ten feet away from the equipment. It was highly unlikely that Kamuk slipped and fell, hitting his head on the equipment in the process. The only conclusion was that Kamuk was murdered. Someone or something incredibly strong picked up the equipment and bashed his head in. Fear started to spread in the village. Similar tragedies were reported over the years. Aside from mysterious disappearances and horrific deaths, there were also reports of a strange creature or creatures lurking in the woods as well as the waters off the shore of Port Chatham Bay. One local, Tom Larson, reported seeing a huge and hairy man destroying the fish wheels of the cannery located near the beach. He left to get his gun. Upon his return, the creature just stared at him before walking away. Some stories told of trees in the woods getting ripped out and then shoved back upside down. There were even stories about hauntings happening at the mine in Chrome. There was plenty of speculation on who or what was causing these disturbances and deaths. Most of the locals blamed the Nantinuk, although there were also rumors about a white-faced lady ghost wearing a long black dress haunting the village. According to the locals, the spirit appeared at the cliff located above the town. She was wearing a long black dress that dragged behind her when she walked. Her face was white. Locals reported that she would scream and moan uncontrollably before disappearing into the cliff face. Eventually, the fear and uncertainty took its toll on the residents of Portlock. By 1949, all the residents of Portlock had moved out, settling in neighboring villages. Only the postmaster was left, bravely staying on despite the threat of a half-man, half-beast creature and a white-faced ghost lady. However, in 1951, the postmaster gave up as well. The post office was closed and the village had officially become a ghost town. Things were quiet for a while, but in the 70s it was reported that a fisherman took refuge in the abandoned village during a storm. He noticed something strange walking around his camp on two feet. He was so terrified that he left as soon as it was possible. So is Nantinuk real, or is there some other reason why Portlock continues to remain abandoned? The official story for the exodus of Portlock's residents is that the village was too far away from the newly built Alaska Route 1. They knew that their prosperous community would soon die down because of this, like many small towns that were bypassed by highways. The Alaska Route 1 created an efficient and more affordable transportation route between Anchorage and many towns in the Kenai Peninsula. Towns that were inaccessible from the highway, such as Portlock, were bound to be abandoned. However, oral traditions shared by the Portlock village elders who fled to Nanwalek, a nearby town, talk about a creature that's quite different from the Bigfoot most of us know. Aside from a similar height, Estimated at eight feet tall and being covered in fur, the Nantinok is believed to be supernatural and evil in nature. It is believed to have sharp claws capable of ripping animals and people apart with ease. In fact, the earlier stories of the Nantinok can be traced back to the 1700s. These were noted down in European expedition logs told to them by the native Alaskans. According to a local from Nanwalek, the elders often told them to never go out on a foggy day. She also shared stories told to her by her mother about how the people coexisted with Nantinuk, how they respected him and kept their distance. Unfortunately, these stories are not proof of life. While the narrative of the Nantinuk is compelling and captivating, the fact is that there is no concrete physical evidence that proves its existence. No DNA, no bodies or bones, and photo or video proof. It is said that there are around three dozen people who died in Portlock 
under mysterious circumstances, but there are no reports from authorities that prove these incidents did happen. According to the census conducted in the area, the number of residents seem to have remained the same over the years. The only real mysterious death that was recorded in the town was that of the logger Andrew Kamuk, who was killed by an unknown individual using his equipment. If the other deaths had truly occurred, the newspapers would have reported it at the time. But what about the stories from the former residents of Portlock? It's not unusual for parents to use myths and legends to prevent their children from doing anything they shouldn't. We don't discount the importance of these stories passed down through generations. They have cultural value and are endlessly fascinating, but we still can't say that we should accept them as truth. So, what most likely happened in the town of Portlock 70 years ago? It seems mundane and anticlimactic, but the simplest and most believable explanation is that Portlock became a dying town ever since the highway was built. Economic instability and geographical isolation forced the residents to look for a new place to live where they could thrive. The legend of the Portlock monster is intriguing. The mystery of it all allures us, coaxing us to dig deep into the unexplained to look for answers. Unfortunately, like the Loch Ness Monster, Nantinak may just be part of the folklore of the people in the area. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.